Yeah, I, as a professional photographer, am technically challenged, and my field, rather, is technically challenged, and I'll tell you why. The more sophisticated the technology becomes, the easier it is for people to enter into the field and call themselves photographers. So in my particular case, the, the entry of a lot of people calling themselves photograph photographers pushes the prices down to a point where it's very hard for a photographer th that is a pro to compete against this, though I'm really, really just competing against myself. However, when people call, when I say how much for this and how much for that, despite all the best efforts of steering away from the pricing game, because I'm really selling myself and my service, a great deal, great number, or great percentage of, of work, I, I never have a chance to, to actually get, to get to the point of meeting the person and selling myself. Okay, let me give you a couple of suggestions. It, it is a challenge more in your business than, than in others. Here's something to consider. When somebody asks you how much something is, find out a couple of things first to change the direction of the, of the, the uh, discussion. What is the event that you're, you're asking us to photograph? It's my son's bar mitzvah. Connect with that feeling. Oh, your son is having a bar mitzvah. And I'm sure, and when you do this, some of you have been in my home and have watched me do this. Even when you're on the phone, shake your head like this. I'm sure you know that the bar mitzvah is a very important milestone in your child's life. You understand that what you're going to have left, I, you know what, try it. It's very nice to it say. works because what you are doing is differentiating yourself from the crowd. Take it on straight and say, you know what, there are hundreds of people out there with cameras who call themselves photographers. When you consider what the importance of that event is, then that's a different consideration. Can you find someone who will do your event for less than I can? Absolutely. Would you like five of their names? I'll be delighted to give you the names of people who are less expensive. When you want it done right, when you want it done with someone who connects to the event, when you want something meaningful, we should talk. When your main concern is spending as little as you have, I respect that. You have the right to make your own choices. Wow. You're not the right client for me. Wow. Nobody, but nobody expects a person in a selling situation to flip things 180 degrees and do what's called a takeaway. Right. I, I'm guessing, can, Charlie, you're Can I respond to Usher? You're Tell very responsive, oh, please do. <laughs> so, we're uh, By the way, excuse me for one sure. second. Sometime in the next 30 days, you will be doing a 20 minute presentation <coughs> on a subject that interests you. Okay. Great. So, we're similar in terms of. Uh, web marketing, design, whatever. You know, so many. I mean, I've been doing in this business since the web started, and so many people. You and Al Gore. Uh, so, so many people. They take a six-week course at Sivan, Hadassah, wherever, and say they're a web designer, right? So it's very similar. First thing I do when a potential client calls me is I try to figure out what kind of site it is, and within three to five minutes. I say, a site like that starts at X. Is that within your budget? I don't want to waste my time. And when you position yourself that, one, you get rid of the people you don't want to deal with anyway. We're going after sophisticated clients that understand they want to invest, and they're going to get that return on their investment. Mm -hmm. right? So if they're not that kind of client and they're looking to be cheap, I don't want to work with them. And I let them know that. I'll tell them that almost verbatim on the phone. And I make them make the decision, do you want to work with me? I have something of high value. I don't need you. You need me. Um, there's a, down here, uh, Eric wants to respond, please. Ooh. Eric with the Fry Networks. Um, I keep a list of five of my competitors on an email form that I'll send to people. And if somebody calls and asks me and, you know, about pricing first, I'll say, you know what, I think probably we're not the right company for you. And I'll be happy to send you a list of my five competitors, and perhaps they can work with you. And they'll say, what, you mean we're not for you? And I say, well, it sounds to me that the, the most important thing is price and not the delivery of the job or the quality of the work. And so therefore, if what you want is price, I'm happy to send you the price leaders. And all of a sudden, for, for, for many people, that disarms them. They say, well, I, no, I want a good, I want a good job. You 
know, and by that time we flipped them. So that's how we get the good jobs and we send the bad jobs. If the first question I had, the rule here in Israel is if the first question is how much do you charge, my response is we charge too much. And you need to go somewhere else and here's five emails or five a list of five competitors. Maybe you buy a Rolls Royce. You need to ask how much it costs. Yeah, it shouldn't, should it shouldn't, shouldn't be the first question. Okay. You shouldn't be asking. Deborah, please. I love that, Eric, by the way. I love that, and I'm going to take that. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. But I think one of the things that we all forget is that our, our, our best asset is our intellectual property. Nobody is... No one in the room can get into the head of anyone else. So when somebody calls me, just like Charlie, everyone thinks they can create their own Facebook group. And the truth is you can't. You can create your own Facebook group, you can create your own LinkedIn profile, and you can read online how to do all of that, one, two, three, four, five. But when they call me and they say, well, uh, uh, why?" literally I've had them say, why should I hire you? I can create my own Facebook group. And I say back to them, you can. You can create your own Facebook group. But if you want a strategy behind that when? to help your Facebook group succeed, then you should talk to me. And I would be happy to talk to you about that. So I always bring it back to like my intellectual property is sort of the way that I frame it. When people talk to me, I think, well, they can either hire me for you know the goods or they can hire me for the intellectual property. And I want them to hire me for the intellectual property because I think I have a very good mind for strategy. And I think that's my competitive advantage. What? To, to summarize what has been said here this morning, and it's very true, what people are buying from you is what's between your ears, not what's in your hands. No one else on the planet has what's between your ears brings your life experience. And when you take the assertive approach that Eric suggested, Charlie suggested, and Deborah has certainly suggested as well, you earn an enormous amount of respect from someone because they say to themselves, wow, this is not a typical business person. We're going to flip over since Deborah mentioned LinkedIn and we've talked about this. And here are some things that have happened for me in the last few days. And this is how to make money on LinkedIn, which is a question we've all been asked. Step one. Join groups within your domain experience. Step two, join groups within your domain experience. Step three, see what the groups that other people within the groups that are within your domain experience have joined and expand your reach exponentially. When I joined a group for POS or point of sale information, someone posted a discussion. Also very important that you contribute positively to the discussions. This person posted that they were looking for distribution for their um, software to sell the restaurants. Long story short, I spoke to the man. Hopefully, he will be integrating the discount cards, or not the discount cards, the gift cards and the, the prepaid cards that our service is, because by offering him a value add, it's something that makes it easier for him to sell his, his product and giving him three referrals in the first minute and a half of conversation. Then finding out, I said, and by the way, when are you coming to Israel, I'd like to take you to lunch. His response was, it's funny you should mention that. My uh, nephew is having a bar mitzvah there in August. So he's coming here. He needs an apartment. I asked him if they had found all of the things to do the bar mitzvah. I, he said no. I said to him, have your sister call me. And whatever you need anywhere in Israel, please let me know. We'll be happy to do this. How did this come out? I joined the group, saw a link, made a contact. When you want to double, and this is a goal I've set for myself, which I will achieve, at this point there are 215 connections on LinkedIn. By next week it's going to be 430, and you're saying, oh God, how are you going to double it? The math came very simply. I'm going to go to each and every person that I know, find one contact of theirs where there's a connection in a way to tie together, send that person an email saying what's in it for them for joining with me on LinkedIn. And my objective is to be a lion by the 15th of June and come in and speak and roar about it.